to the Outdoor Dog YouTube channel. That's Peter and I'm Stephanie. Today we're talking about canine enrichment. So if you guys have checked out our indoor dogs playlist, you will have seen me talk about enrichment a lot. But what actually is enrichment? So enrichment is just a principle that's aimed at promoting an animal's physical and mental well-being by addressing their needs. This can be done through games, through puzzles, or by changing the environment. What is your dog's favorite activity that is enriching to them? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. There are tons of benefits to enrichment. If it's done correctly, it can help reduce your dog's stress, reduce boredom, and even decrease some unwanted behaviors in your dog. Some of those are stress related, uh, which of course, if you reduce the dog's stress, you reduce their stress related behaviors. An example of this might be if a dog barks because they're bored. If you add in some enrichment, uh, maybe they won't be as bored anymore and won't bark quite as much, or maybe not at all. Also, enrichment often increases physical and mental activity, which is really great for our dogs. There are multiple um, elements to creating an enrichment program for your dog. An enrichment program should address a variety of needs. This might be your dog's um, ability to do their natural behaviors. If you have a dog who really likes to chase things, maybe <clears throat> a border collie, um, that herding instinct, right? That's a natural behavior and how can we create an enrichment program to meet those needs. Maybe you have a dog who has a natural behavior of digging. Can you create a digging pit for them or provide some other type of enrichment where they're utilizing that natural behavior in a constructive way? They also, of course, need safety and security as something that's natural to them. It's instinctual. But they also need some mental stimulation. This would be like learning or problem solving. Their emotional needs need to be met as well. This could be social interactions or just having a safe place where they can relax. Physical needs, of course, fall into enrichment as well. This could be your exercise, nutrition, or health. And then lastly, my favorite is a dog's ability to make a choice in their life. Um, I also call this agency, right? If a dog has agency, if they have choice, they have some level of control over their life, their decisions, their environment. This is one that I think we often miss and maybe aren't as comfortable giving our dogs choices. But there's a lot of easy ways to implement that, um, to implement a choice in the dog's life. There's some really great enrichment games that I might show in future videos. But an easy one would be to just teach your dog how to ring a bell to go outside. A lot of people train that in an effort to teach their dog how to tell them when they need to go potty. But really allowing the dog that choice to go outside whenever they ask is super, super beneficial for them. Peter um, loves to ring the bell to go out and just hang out on the porch which is a safe place for him, it's fenced, and um, he can just enjoy the sunshine. Also, when he's out there, he can tell me that he wants in by ringing a doorbell that I have out that I've taught him to ring. So that allows him choice of when he wants to go out and when he wants to come in. Of course, sometimes I have to say no to his choice for whatever reason, but for the most part, he's allowed to come in and out of the house as much as he wants. That's a way to implement choice into your dog's life. So maybe you want to do enrichment with your dog, but what types of enrichment are there? There's a lot of different types. I'm kind of going to list them off. The first is social. Having social interactions is usually pretty enriching for most animals. This could be allowing your dog to hang out with a dog that they really like or a dog that they like to play with. There's also an environmental enrichment. This could be having a fenced yard that they can enjoy and explore. There's also foraging. Foraging is simply just finding food. 
And that's a pretty easy one to, to implement. It's probably the easiest one in, in my opinion because they sell so many food puzzles in stores now or food toys that you can allow your dog to kind of forage to get their food. You can also utilize the snuffle mat, which we just created a video for recently. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Along with foraging is nutritional enrichment. It's really important for your dog to have a good quality food, but you can also include some enrichment by mixing up the types of treats that you give your dog or the little snacks that you give them throughout the day. That all can provide some enrichment as well. There's also visual enrichment. I find this one a little bit harder to kind of come up with something, you know, off the top of my head of just something that's visual. Um, but anything that reflects the dog's image could be a visual enrichment. There's also scent enrichment. You can you know, allow your dog to sniff during their walks. That's a really easy and great way to add in some of that scent enrichment into their lives. There's also auditory enrichment. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I love canine musical freestyle. It's an amazing dog sport. Shout out to Dogs Can Dance Challenge that has titling opportunities for freestyle and also poised for su success has some amazing um, freestyle titling opportunities that you can take advantage of with your dogs. But the great thing about freestyle is you can really explore what music your dog likes. Even if you don't do freestyle, you can still play different genres of music at home and see what your dog thinks. If your dog leaves the room, they probably don't like it. If they get you know, joyful or excited or want to play during music, they might happen to like it. There's also some companies that make music specifically for dogs um, that you can utilize as well. The other type of enrichment is tactile enrichment. This might just be massage or brushing your dog, but it could also be that dig pit that we talked about earlier, allowing your dog's feet to feel what it's like to go through that, that dirt or whatever you happen to use for a digging pit for your dog. There's two more and they both deal with objects. The simple one is toys. You can add some toys. I don't know about you, but I have tons of toys for Peter. Um, you can go ahead and rotate those out. Like if you have a toy box, it's really great to rotate the toys so that they're kind of newer for your dog and they don't get kind of bored with them or they don't think they're just this familiar thing that lays on the floor. Also, um, you can introduce some novel objects to your dog and let them explore them. This would be something that your dog has never seen before. And it could be just that bucket that has been at the back of the shed for 10 years that your dog has never seen. You can introduce that to them and let them investigate. The one thing I wanna point out with all these different types of enrichment is that usually if you do a type of enrichment, you're hitting multiple types all at once. For example, if you grab that bucket from the back of the shed, it's gonna smell different, right? So not only is it a novel object, but it smells different. And if your dog has never seen a bucket before, it might actually be some visual enrichment too. So you can really get creative in how you pick things in your dog's life to kind of meet these types of enrichment. What can you do to add in some auditory enrichment, some scent enrichment, some novel objects, Things like that, you can really get creative and it's lots of fun. There are a few considerations for enrichment. The first is whether or not your dog finds the activity enriching, it's really up to them. So an example of this would be some dogs love to play with other dogs and they've never met a dog, another dog they didn't like. They just love everybody and they love to play and it's great. Some dogs though, hate social interactions. They don't like to play. They don't want to be around other dogs. They just kind of want to be left alone. So for that dog, social interactions might not be appropriate. 
or your dog might find kind of that they like some social interactions but not others. Peter tends to really love hanging out with dogs that for the most part ignore him. They're not up in his space um, and he can go for walks with them or whatever and not worry about um, getting stepped on or getting approached by that other dog inappropriately. So one thing about dog parks, um, I really caution you, we actually don't go to dog parks as a lot of people don't because you can't choose those other dogs that are interacting with yours. So they might have different personalities or different play styles that your dog might not like or might actually worry or scare your dog. So if you're going to do some type of social interaction, I highly recommend that you know the other dog and know that it's a good match. The other thing that I want to talk about too is there are other enrichments that might cause stress for certain dogs. One example would be scents, the, the scent, excuse me, of an unfamiliar animal. So for one dog, they might think that's so cool that they're smelling this thing, right? This cat, maybe they've never been introduced to cats and, and you have something that smells like a cat. They might think that's amazing enrichment. But I might also stress out a different dog. So that's one thing to consider. Also, um, for, visual for visual enrichment for farm animals, sometimes you could put up a mirror, just like your dog. You could just let them look in a mirror. But having another dog there might stress them out. In the case of the farm animals, depending on what type of animal it is, it might actually ram the mirror um, and get that stressed. So it's really important to gear the enrichment specifically to the individual dog. Also, that leads me into something else. Um, be really careful about safety, right? We want to make sure any enrichment activity we do is safe for our dogs. And we also want to supervise them while they're doing it. Something might be pretty safe when you're standing there and watching them. But if left unattended, maybe that safety becomes more of a concern because they might chew on something or those types of things. So really make sure that the item or activity is safe and that you're there to supervise. Lastly, um, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So if we do too much enrichment, our dogs might get tired or it might be too much change or too much stuff in the dog's life. So for example, if you're doing a lot of environmental enrichment where your dog doesn't have consistency in their life, um, they could become stressed or worried. Predictability really promotes safety and security because the dog knows what's coming, right? They don't have to guess. So we don't want so much enrichment that that predictability and that consistency is gone. So be mindful of that too. And how much enrichment you do probably depends on your individual dog as well. I tend to like to do, aside from exercise, um, we don't usually do an enrichment game every single day, but we probably hit four or five a week. Um, so that's just something to consider. All right, guys, that is it for our, our video on what is canine enrichment. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Go out and get creative of some fun things that you can do with enrichment. It's really a fascinating um, topic of study and it's fascinating to do. And it's so much fun to just watch your dog react to these enrichment opportunities that we give them. So have fun with it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.